I'm sorry, we're making it formal now. Yeah, I tell you, it's very, very formal. Sorry. Uh, do you think Katie Telford should be called to the committee to testify? I don't think so. Um, there's been a long tradition in Canada that uh, under that political staffers, they're not like me and my 337 colleagues that have taken, you know, or prepared to defend ourselves and defend what we do, but our political staff really, it should be extraordinarily exceptional uh, that they appear before committee, if at all. Are you worried uh, that maybe the Conservatives are going to derail the meeting later today, um, you know, in a sense filibustering to, to get, I guess, to get their way on this? Well, we were here until uh, 9, what, 10 last night, and uh, I fully expect that we'll have a full day of meetings today. The committee yesterday learned that the RCMP is not investigating any attempts at foreign interference in the 2021 election. What do you want to hear from Elections Canada's commissioner today about what they perhaps are doing? Well, I would certainly like to hear about uh, any concerns that they had over uh, whether, whether there was elections, election interference, uh, foreign interference in our elections. Um, did it reach the threshold that they felt that they should pass those concerns on to the RCMP? The RCMP has a, you know, they have to go through sort of a, a I guess, a legal sniff test to find out whether or not they have enough evidence uh, to be able to pursue or to justify having charges with the likely um, uh, success of having, um, of having a conviction. Obviously, it didn't meet that threshold. Uh, but I'd like to hear from the Commissioner from Elections as to you know, what she learned and what she did. Will your party vote in favour for the public inquiry that the NDP are calling for? You'll have to, you'll have to wait until we, uh, until we make our decision. Do you have any concerns with like, how many times security officials say, we can't tell you? Well, you know, of course I'm a curious person, I'd like to know. But the reality is, is that uh, these women and men uh, work uh, for very uh, long hours and with a lot of resources to try to keep us all safe. And sometimes the information that they've gathered from our 5i colleagues, uh, I imagine that's not the kind of information that they want to release because for any uh, countries that are involved in that, they might be able to reverse engineer um, as to where that information came from. And that could put people's lives at stake. So I understand why they would want to make sure uh, that certain information doesn't get revealed. However, there is a, a place where parliamentarians can get that information, and that's with the National Security and Intelligence Committee of Parliamentarians. Like they can't fill that back they, to the... They can't tell me, but I certainly know that if something didn't meet the sniff test according to them, you could tell by their body language that they're not happy with what has happened. And uh, so far, I think NCCOP has worked quite well. Why not have a public inquiry to you? What do you think the downsides are? Well, you know, I, I'm, still, uh, I'm still thinking about, you know, what uh, a public inquiry will do. I mean, when we hear from our security officials, one of the downsides of a public inquiry is that uh, they would face the same obstacles uh, in terms of being able to share information that parliamentarians who are not a part of NCCOP would, uh, would face. And I'm trying to figure out whether or not Canadians would be happy with that or would that satisfy their needs. So, you know, the case can be made either way. I'm still, I'm still wrestling with it. Do you think Canadians are going to be satisfied right now when they hear, oh, maybe we don't want to have a public inquiry, but at the same time we're hearing from public officials that the Prime Minister was briefed multiple times on instances of foreign interference in our elections, but we don't want to give you any more answers about that. Well, again, I guess we come back to the question as to what does the sources of that information and, and what can be shared, what would be matters of national security and what are not. Um, at some point, we all have to have a bit of trust in this system. And like I said, I, I trust my fellow parliamentarians who are on NCCOP to hear all the information fully, uh, to make a, determin a determination whether or not they feel that our security agencies are doing uh, all that is need to do, needed to be done to keep Canadians safe. Thank you. Thank you very Sorry, with information, I guess, being leaked to the media, has anyone I'm lost some of their clearance? Are you allowed to comment I, on that? I, I, yeah, I don't, don't know that question. I'm sorry. Thanks. Thank you. Were you satisfied with yesterday's committee meeting? Well, what we saw yesterday was the coalition at work with the NDP once again doing the bidding of this Prime Minister in shutting down debate on my motion to bring forward 
Katie Telford, who was a critical witness to get to the heart of this scandal, and that is, what did this Prime Minister know, when did he know about it, and what did he do or fail to do about Beijing's interference in our elections? And so, again, the coalition at work, uh, the NDP doing absolutely everything to assist the Liberals in covering up this scandal. And, uh, you know, quite frankly, at some point, maybe Peter Julian ought to just consider crossing the floor and joining the Liberals or joining the PMO because he's doing all of their work. And so today, I will be insisting that this matter be dealt with, that my motion be brought back to the floor, debated, and voted on, and the NDP will have to pick a side. They will have to choose between getting answers for Canadians about Beijing's interference or doing what they've been doing up until now, and that is covering up for this Prime Minister. So you won't support Peter Julian's motion? Yeah, okay. Mr. Fergus, Chris Ryan, it's good to see you. Um, to so here. after all the, the votes and the Julian motion passes, what does this mean? Well, this means that uh, the committee has, uh, on division, has uh, decided to uh, call for a public inquiry. <laughs> And uh, with, uh, which is going to be larger than just the China question, it's going to be taking a look at foreign interference writ large. Do you think a public inquiry will then happen? I mean, it's obviously the PM has to obey it, right? Yes, I, I believe that is the case. Uh, look, I think there are uh, many reasons why you'd want to lend yourself to that uh, question, but there are also some important issues that we heard from our national security folks. Uh, who testified today, who testified yesterday, who said that a public inquiry, by the nature of it, dealing with the sensitive information, the top secret information, um, probably will not be able to get, uh, uh, in, in, to provide all the information that people would, would are expecting now because of this, uh, because of this motion passing through committee. So I think it's, it's something that sounds nice on paper, but it's gonna come up short against what people's expectations are. Qu'est-ce que le nouveau étage, le prochain étage, excuse-moi, après cette communauté La prochaine étape euh, maintenant, c'est qu'il y a euh, le comité euh, à, sur division, euh, ce n'était pas unanime, a décidé d'adopter euh, une mesure pour établir une, une enquête publique une commission publique sur la question de euh, l'ingérence politique euh, étrangère. Euh, selon les experts dans la sécurité nationale, euh, ils ont témoigné hier, ils ont témoigné encore aujourd'hui, unanimement, qui ont dit qu'une euh, commission publique euh, ne peut pas euh, transmettre ou recevoir des documents qui sont secrets, qui est nécessaire pour Faire une, pour aller au, au fond des choses. Euh, et alors, moi, je crains euh, que les Canadiens seront induits en erreur, que cette commission va aller au fond des choses. En, en, et en effet, ils ne peuvent pas parce que euh, ce n'est pas un comité euh, qui, est, euh, qui peut recevoir ces documents-là sans mettre en, en péril nos... Euh, relations avec euh, nos alliés, euh, leurs services int euh, d'intelligence, les services de sécurité, et aussi de mettre peut-être notre personnel en péril aussi. It just occurs to me that since you are uh, an Ottawa Gatineau MP and since Nordstrom, according to the Global Mail, is leaving Canada, people are losing their jobs, Nordstrom Rack as yeah. well. Do you have any reaction in English yeah, and French well, to that? Well, well first of all, uh, to the families of the employees of Nordstrom, uh, you know, I, I, I'm, I'm certainly uh, feeling uh, solidarity with them. Uh, and uh, I know that we will work very hard to make sure that they get all the services that they need to make this transition. Um, I'm hoping that, I am hoping that um, for these families uh, who are working in a service industry, in an industry where uh, there is really a shortage of workers, that I'm hoping that they'll be able to uh, land on their feet very quickly, but they should know that their governments will have their backs. Et aussi en français. 
Alors, tout d'abord, euh, une sens de solidarité avec euh, tous les employés qui viennent d'être limogés de Nordstrom. Euh, c'est toujours... Tu sais, de perdre un emploi, ça, c'est quelque chose qui est vraiment sérieux. Euh, mais euh, j'aimerais les rassurer euh, que les gouvernements vont toujours avoir euh, leurs intérêts à cœur. Ils seront là pour le, les appuyer. Et nous espérons aussi que dans, euh, dans cette économie euh, où il y a euh, vraiment une pénurie de main-d'oeuvre, pour ces gens-là qui travaillent dans les ventes, dans les services, euh, deux occupations qui sont vraiment... À, tout le monde est à la recherche de ces employés-là. J'espère qu'ils peuvent trouver un, un autre emploi rapidement. Did I miss anything, Mickey? You good? I'm, I'm talked out. Thank okay, you. I really appreciate it. Great. Right. No, no, no problem at all. Great. Right Thanks, Sorry, Marcus. Forgive me. Qu'est-ce que le nouveau étage pour pour après aujourd'hui? Est-ce qu'il y a un commissaire public maintenant ou euh, ben, les partis d'opposition ont clairement démontré qu'on doit faire la lumière sur tout l'ingérence étrangère euh, du régime de Pékin dans nos élections. Donc c'est clair. Euh, ce qu'on souhaite maintenant, c'est que le le, le camouflage de NPD et de la coalition libérale de NPD se termine. On, on voulait continuer à faire l'étude à PROC euh, pour continuer d'étudier cette question-là. On a vu aujourd'hui que les réunions de PROC sont absolument essentielles pour euh, voir clair, voir… Euh, on est constaté aujourd'hui que c'est pratiquement impossible de déclencher une alerte publique sur l'ingérence étrangère pendant les élections avec le panel de cinq personnes auquel refaire Justin Trudeau. On n'a pas eu encore les réponses à savoir qu'est-ce que Justin Trudeau savait, quand il l'a appris, pourquoi il n'a rien fait, pourquoi il n'y a encore aucun diplomate. Euh, du régime communiste de Pékin qui a été euh, arrêté ou interpellé par les forces de l'ordre. Donc, il y a encore beaucoup de questions, il y a encore beaucoup de travail à faire en comité. Et malheureusement, on a vu aujourd'hui le NPD euh, décider d'ajourner euh, nos discussions pour que le comité PROC ait le mandat d'aller plus loin et de recevoir Cathy Telford, la chef de cabinet euh, du premier ministre, de recevoir euh, des témoins qui auraient pu nous éclairer davantage sur tout ce qui euh, entoure euh, ce que le premier ministre savait ou ne savait pas. Donc, on va continuer de pousser. On, on pense que les Canadiens méritent des réponses et le premier ministre, Justin Trudeau, doit donner des réponses. Autre sujet, le groupe. Ah, OK. It's time. Ah, C'est encore. Uh, le, le Globe Mail fait le reportage. Uh, le grand magasin Nordstrom et Partir Canada et le 13 uh, magasins fermés. Uh, mille, je, pas, ah, mille je, personnes je, qui, qui je partent. Connais, je ne connais pas. Le, le connais pas? Non, je ne connais même pas Nordstrom. <laughs> <laughs> Au Québec, on n'a pas Nordstrom. <laughs> Simon's, Simon, say le mail. OK. <laughs> Désolé. Where does everything stand now in your, your mind? I mean, we've. we've had a good airing of everything, but where do things stand? Well, once again, the NDP demonstrated that uh, they're willing to do the bidding of the Prime Minister in shielding Katie Telford, the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff, from appearing before a committee. That's the third time that they've shielded Katie Telford. So they had a choice. They had a choice of uh, allowing the committee to do its work, uh, to see that the Prime Minister's Chief of Staff, who is uh, close to the Prime Minister, uh, come and answer questions before this committee to get to the bottom of what the Prime Minister knows, uh, when he knew about it, and what he did or did not do to respond to Beijing's interference, or uh, they could choose to cover it up with the Liberals. And they chose to join the Liberals in covering up Justin Trudeau's inaction to counter Beijing's interference in the 2019 and 2021 election. The, the other question I have for you, sir, yeah. is Fred Delory, Mr. O'Toole's campaign manager, told CBC's Power in Politics in the last hour that he is against the idea of a public inquiry and he thinks NCCOP is the way to deal with it. What do you think about Mr. Delory? Because he was leading with Ms. Michaud the, the O'Toole campaign in the last election, which you ran. Well, we support an inquiry, uh, but We believe that it's imperative that this committee does its work, and we want to hear from PMO officials, and we want to hear from them as soon as possible, including, including Katie Telford. So it's very you're unfortunate. Not, you're not answering my question about Mr. Delores' well, comments. Well, look, Who was your look, campaign manager for well, what you ran? Well, anyhow, uh, look, we support, the leader was very clear, uh, Pierre Polly was very clear about his support 
for a public inquiry. Uh, a motion was passed at committee with uh, conservative amendments and uh, but at the same time what is critical is that this committee do its work and what we have seen from Mr. Julian is that he's prepared to block the work of this committee to shield the Prime Minister and to uh, cover up on the part of the Prime Minister and that's very disappointing but you know Mr. Julian has chosen uh, his side and he is on the side of doing the bidding of this Prime Minister and the Liberal Party. Right. Good to see you. Thank you. Thank you.